Hello, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and I'm the artist behind Whitehouse Art. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through how to paint an octopus using watercolors. For a full list of everything you need to get started, be sure to check out the video description below. And please hit the like button if you enjoy painting along with me and hit subscribe if you wanna see other videos just like this one. So to get started, I'm going to walk you through drawing out an octopus. It's a pretty basic shape and you can look up a reference photo if you want something a little different, but I'm just gonna take you through sort of the one that most people see often where we have the big oval for the head. So we'll start with an oval shape and then it's gonna kind of go down and start moving into the legs. So I'll draw an eye here just to sort of ground it. So we know where everything else is going to go because above that eye, we're going to have sort of a shape that references the eye that's on the other side. And then we can just start drawing legs and you can make them wherever you want. So I'll have one that comes up here and I'm drawing them fairly dark, but you're going to want to keep it as light as you can um, just so that it doesn't show when the watercolors go on it. And we want to keep them fairly similar in size, but because this is a little bit abstract, it's okay if they're differing. So I'm just going to keep making my way around the octopus. And then we have one that comes here. We're going to have to have some behind as well, so, oops, it has to look like it's all coming out from the same spot, that's why I erased that. So we're going to have one that comes here, and they just get wider as they make their way towards the body. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need two more. We'll have one kind of in the background that's a little bit smaller. And then maybe one more up here. That's kind of fading off into the background. So it's behind. All right. So once we've got all the legs sort of laid out where we want them to go, legs, tentacles. We can start adding color. So I'm going to be adding a bunch of rainbow colors. Pick the, your favorite ones. You don't have to use the ones I'm using, but with this, the most important technique is doing the wet in wet. So we're going to start by just laying down some water. And like I said, if, if your pencil lines are too dark, they will show through. So make sure they're not too dark before you get started. So I'll lay down some water and we're gonna move a little bit quickly. So if you find that I'm just moving way too fast, feel free to pause it. So for my first one, I'm gonna start with a dark purple. So I'm just gonna draw in the dark purple along the edge here. And I'm gonna be changing up the quiet colors quite a bit. So every time I go away, I'm probably rinsing the brush. And so we'll just have this clear water come up. And then I, I always like to move from purple to pink. I just feel like that makes a nice transition. So we're gonna do that right here. And I'll drop in a little bit of pink over here. So I'm kind of just making my way around. And we're basically gonna fill in the entire shape of the octopus, but just in stages. And because I want this to be fairly loose, before it dries, I can sometimes go in and just grab a little bit off the octopus. So I take clear water, move it right up, and then I just kind of touch it in to a tentacle. Then we're going to go and just keep making our way around. And if you don't get it perfectly in the line, that's lines, that's totally okay, because this is a fairly loose painting. We're going to do blue for this one. This is a blue called Prussian blue. As I said, I do put links to all of my favorite paints and supplies in the video description below if you're curious about anything I use. 
And so for some of these tentacles, I want to just insinuate that there's the little um, suction cups on them. So I'm going to draw a few while it's still wet. I'm keeping them fairly loose, so they're not too fussy. So just a bit of clear water. Then I'm going to draw the head, so we're kind of skipping around the painting, as I said before. So it's okay if you miss some spots and leave them white or lighter. I'm going to use a little bit of teal on the head, just on the top. I love the way the teal really bleeds along and mixes with the other colors. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the Prussian blue around the back. And then maybe a little bit of purple in the center. As it dries, it's really going to bleed around and you're going to want to decide where you want it to be darker and lighter. The more you mush your brush in the watercolors, the darker it's going to be. So if you're wanting to have a lot of impact, just really grab a lot of pigment. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue here. And then this one I'm actually going to have go to green. And so I'm going to use a lime green right at the end. And this green really likes to go, likes to move. I find certain water, watercolors move more than others. And I'm going to use a little bit of teal just right in between to transition them. All right, so we're just going to keep making our way around. I don't have any rhyme or reason as to which ones I start with. I just like to bounce around till they're all covered. And this one, I'm actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of pink at the end. Right. Sometimes as it's drying, I'll go back to certain ones just because I like the way when you continue to add um, paint to a watercolor, sometimes you get little blooms and things that happen and I really love that effect. So I'm always kind of making my way around and re-wetting certain areas. So for instance, this one, I'm gonna add some more water and then I'm just gonna move the page around. So this would be a good time if you want to have some bleeding off the page, you can add a bit of water in certain areas. And then all you do is you hold up the page just like so and keep adding water until it naturally wants to find its way down. Just like so. All right, so we're gonna do this one next. And this one, I think I'm gonna throw in a little bit of orange. I like the way the orange and the pink look together, so I think we'll have this one transition to a pink. Have fun with it though. You don't have to do exactly the same thing. See which colors you like together. If you make a mistake, it's a fairly quick painting. You can always start again. I'm gonna let this one drip down too. Oops. And I just tell it where to go and let it drip into that one. And this one, we're gonna have it transition into a yellow because I like, similar to the orange to pink, I do like the way yellow and orange look together. So while certain areas are still wet, I'm gonna go in and add a bit more color to darken it a bit. Especially when you have drips that come off the page, sometimes it lightens it a lot. And then I'm gonna add some circles here while it's still wet, cause they'll bleed in and I like that.
All right, now we're gonna go behind and add some more. This time I'm gonna use a little bit of green. This one is called Viridian Green, so it's a bit darker than the lime green. I thought it was wet here and it isn't, so I just added a bit. I'm just gonna add a little more clear water. We're gonna do some more of those little spots I told you about where you let the paint bleed out. You just put some clear water. And we'll have that transition to a lime green. Now this one behind, I want it to look mostly like suction cups. So what I'm gonna do is do some little swirls on it and then I'll go in and add some color. So I'm just doing clear water swirls just super quick ones. And then I go in with my blue and I just add the blue in. And it'll sort of bleed in where I've drawn those swirls, but it'll be lighter and darker in some areas. And if you decide you don't want to have any that are just totally suction cups, that's okay too. You don't have to have that effect. It's just nice to have a variety because some of these would be showing the bottoms of them. All right, so we're almost done this part. Just have one more. Do this one pink as well. This one I'm gonna have it move up and turn to purple. And because it grabbed a bit of color off the orange, I'm just gonna dab that up because sometimes I want it to do that and sometimes I don't and that's why paper towel comes in handy. All right, so now we're gonna loosen up this painting a little bit by adding some clear water around. If you add some drops over top, it'll add some natural variety because some of the drops will land and cause the paint to bleed out. See what I mean? If you add drops around, the paint bleeds in certain areas. So I'm adding some colored drops over top of where I put that clear water just to keep it a little bit interesting. Then we're gonna add some on the head, as well as a little bit of blue on the head. I like that it has that very watery effect when it bleeds out like that. Cause that's what we're really going for here. So just a sort of chaotic piece that bleeds all over, splatters all over. And you gotta really just let go of control here and have fun with it. We're gonna let this dry shortly. And then that way we can go in and add a bit more detail over top. But this isn't supposed to be a fairly detailed painting. This is more just having fun. It's a really good introduction to loose watercolor because with an octopus, it really suits that style. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of teal. Oops. Sometimes you can get a little bit too much on the brush, but we're just gonna add a little bit here and let that dry as well. All right, so we'll let this dry completely and then I'll go in and add a bit more detail. All right, so now that the painting has had some time to dry, I can go in and add some more detail and some more layers. This will just add a bit more complexity to the painting and just make it a little bit more interesting to look at. So we're gonna start by just doing the eye now, because I always feel like having that eye in there helps finish it off and helps me tell when it's ready. Sometimes I even start with the eyes just because I prefer to have that part done. So I'm filling the eye in with black and just keeping a simple small shine mark in it using white of the paper. 
just like that. So now we're gonna go through and add a few little details. So I would like the head to be actually a little bit darker than it is. So I'm gonna go in and cover it, cover it with water all over again. And re-wetting it allows the water to bleed and go in different areas than it did the first time. But I'm wanting to keep the focus of the dark on the back of the head where it already is. So I'm just gonna go in and add some here, just like so. And then a little bit of purple as well. And then using a bit of extra clear water, I'm gonna drop that in and then have it move around. Now it'll move even more as it dries, but I'm just helping it along a little bit. So next I'm gonna draw some lines on the tentacles just to keep a little bit more interest so it's not too one dimensional. So I put a bit of clear water down first and then I'm adding a bit of blue over top. And then I'm gonna go in with just the tip of my brush or a liner brush if you have it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of lining on the painting. So just in certain places, I'll be outlining it. Not everywhere, certainly, but just certain areas I'm going to add a little bit more interest. So I use varying pressure on the brush so that in some places, some of these lines end up a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna add a few more tentacles there. And I like the way the blue looks with this. So I'm using a lot of blue to outline because blue complements a lot of the colors really well. So this one, I'm actually gonna bring in some dark blue and highlight the top of that. I shouldn't say highlight, I should say darken. So just adding a bit of plush and blue in here. All right, and then we're gonna come over here and do the same thing. This one, I'm gonna add some clear water before I do it though. I'm just gonna add it in over top of the clear water so it'll bleed in certain areas and there'll be more of a gradient, so it's not just adding the color straight down. Then I'll outline right here. And so I'm just kind of making my array around and adding lines where I feel like they suit the painting. So now we're gonna do a little bit of purple over top of the pink. So I'm just using the tip of my brush to bounce off the page and add a bit of that detail. And certainly not everywhere. There's a lot of places where I want it to still remain very loose. So here I'm gonna go in where it's dried and I'm actually gonna add a little bit of lime green on top because I love the way the lime green plays off the teal. And I actually noticed that I missed a little bit here of the tentacle, so I might as well go in right now and add that in, but I'm gonna keep it the circles. All right, so we're gonna go in and add a bit of pink here. I like just laying different colors over top. It keeps it a little more interesting. So same with here, I'm actually gonna go in with a bit of yellow. And once it dries, you'll be able to see where one begins and one ends a little bit better. That's the basic idea. And then I kind of look around and say, okay, where else do I need to add more detail? And, and for me, it's right here. And some of this you, you can actually add in, it's not so much detail as layers. So it's just deciding that one area just needs a little bit more interest. So now that I've done that, I'm actually gonna go and add a few splatters over top. And I like doing that while the painting's still fairly wet because what happens is, I'll show you right here, is some of it will bleed in and some of it will, you'll be able to see those water droplets. So here I'll add some pink. 
the pink's fairly dirty, so I have to clean it up. I'll add some pink here. And then I can add some clear water drops and say some yellow over here. So we're just making our way around, adding some more droplets over top of the old ones. And whenever there's too many ones that are the same size, you just go in with clear water and it changes their shape. And we can kind of let that bleed around a little bit. And it's getting to a point where it's almost done for me. I'm just gonna go in and accent this a little bit more. And just do a few more final details. Doing these lines when it's still wet helps them bleed in certain areas and just keeps it from looking too sharp. I'm okay with this one being a little less sharp because it's behind. And I think it's getting to a point where I'm fairly happy with it. So I think it's time to sign it. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. Be sure to hit the subscribe button because I release videos every week. Videos just like this one that are easy for beginners. Thank you so much for watching.